<laughs> okay. Let's try this, see how it goes. When was the last time that you hugged someone? You know, like shook their hand, you know, contacted someone. When was the last time? Do you remember the day? Touch is one of the most overlooked and underrated senses. And right now, I'm pretty sure, and this is a kind of a pun, that you're feeling it. <laughs> you really want someone to touch you. I know that sounds weird, but don't worry, you're gonna get over that soon. Touch is really interesting because it's often overlooked. We love to study things like taste and sight and hearing. Like, you can name specific parts of your eye. The iris, the fovea, the word cortical. Like, if you're a Star Trek fan, cortical stimulator. Mm. But you know, whatever it is, fovea, you can name specific structures in the eye. So you can tell me about all these different parts of your ear and the little bones inside of your inner ear, but can you tell me one thing about how your fingertips work? Is it nerves? Is it specific cells? Something, something? How does touch work? Do you know? Because that's what we're gonna talk about for the next five episodes. They're all gonna come out over the next week. It's really exciting. You are getting uno dos, of Trace. In this series, we're gonna go deep into touch. It's emotionality, how it works, what happens in the brain. We're gonna go into fake touch and touch illusions. It's gonna be really cool. We've got some really great interviews with some amazing people, actually. And I really think that you're gonna enjoy it. So please subscribe, stick around for all five of these episodes. Let's kick into it. Touch is completely overlooked. If you touch something, there is so much information coming into your body. I mean, think about what you're doing right now, whether you're sitting at home on the couch or sitting at home at your table or laying in bed at home because, you know, this is coronavirus time. If this is after that and you're listening to it in the future, think about being on the bus, you know? Think about all the things that you're feeling right now. Think about your body. Where are your hands? Which of your legs is bent? Do you have any pain? Is one of your legs shaking? How are your clothes fitting you right now? Are parts of you hot? Is your body physically contacting anything? You know, a chair, a bed, a couch? Can you feel the edge of that thing? You know, don't look at it, just use your body. Touch is weird if you think about it because every square centimeter of your entire body, including parts of you in the side, can feel things. That is a lot of data, but what is it? What is touch? Merriam-Webster defines touch as, quote, to bring a bodily part into contact with especially so as to perceive through the tactile sense. But that doesn't really describe what touch is, right? It's very clinical. Touch is the ability of your skin to sense pressure and stretching and temperature and vibration and contact. Facilitating touch are very specialized cells in all parts of our body. Of course, there are different concentrations depending on where you are, but we'll come back to that. And those cells mechanically translate forces that act upon them into biological feedback. So you can group touch into a couple of different umbrellas. You've got slow touch, and then you've got fast touch. Slow touch is unmyelinated nerves, whereas fast touch are myelinated nerves. Myelin is a coating that the human body and other organisms' bodies put on some nerves, which increase the speed of the responses of those nerves. So a myelinated nerve is a fast nerve. It's gonna transmit something really quickly, whereas an unmyelinated nerve, you know, take its time. Now, you might be wondering why you don't just put myelin on everything. That's because it's not efficient. You have to make that myelin, it requires resources, so we only put it on the ones that are important. So let's talk about fast or myelinated nerves first. There are mechanoreceptors, which are sensitive to deformation of their membranes, essentially little cells that feel for you. And then they transmit that information to your brain. Those mechanoreceptors are tactile corpuscles, bulbous corpuscles, pachinian corpuscles. Let's look up how to say pachinian, pachinian, pachinian pronunciation. Really I have to watch an ad. Pacinian. Pacinian, okay. They're sensitive to deformation of their cell membranes, and they come in a few different flavors. We've got tactile corpuscles, bulbous corpuscles, pacinian corpuscles, Merkel cells, and they have overlapping functions. The tactile corpuscle, or Meissner corpuscle, involves light touches, like on the fingertips. You've got a lot of those there on the eyelids, and on skin with no hair. Uh, we'll come back to the difference in a minute. 
There's the bulbous corpuscle or Ruffini ending, and they involve stretch, a sense of control and movement where your body is, and also where you're moving inside of your body. Not really touch, but soup's cool. Pacinium corpuscles are onion-shaped connective tissues around nerve endings, and they do high vibrations and deep pressures. Then there are Merkel cells or Merkel discs, which involve pressure, position, shapes, and edges. Those are connected to proprioception, which is the understanding of where your body is in 3D space, and I love that word. And they're all processed in the brain by the somatosensory cortex. Science Direct says that, quote, information about things that are touched, what body part is touching them, all of that is represented within a structural framework that is somewhat the same across different species. Isn't that cool to think about? What you do in your brain when you are touched is not that different from what other species do when they are touched. It is different across different species, but most of the studies are done with monkeys. And what they found is literally a map of the body surfaces in the brain. Can you imagine that? Like, I love that idea. Picture this little mini fig version of yourself, like just embedded deep inside your brain and inside out characters being like, we've got touch, we've got touch here, we've got touch there. I know it's not actually like that, but it's fun to think about, you know, cause science. So that's fast myelinated nerves. There's slow touch as well, which is temperature, pleasant touch, also deep pain. And they're processed by a completely different part of the brain, the insular cortex. And this involves things like taste and pain and emotion as well as soft touch. And we're gonna come back to all of that in the insular cortex soon. But where all these cells collect in our skin creates the resolution of touch. Resolution, I mean it like you think, like a camera. A higher density of touch cells equals more touch sensation. Now, there's a fun experiment that I need a paper clip. Let me see. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, 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 we got it. So this is not unlike a camera. You get that higher touch resolution and higher resolution does indicate a higher sensation of touch. Different parts of your body are better at touching things than other parts. So like the back of your leg has low touch resolution, but your lips have high touch resolution. And you can try this at home and, and really see how it works or feel how it works. Get a paper clip, a paper clip, and you unbend it so it's about one centimeter apart. So one centimeter is not very much, so like that, like a little pinky. And then ask a friend to close their eyes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take their arm or the back of their hand or their leg and touch the paper clip to that. Now ask if they can feel one touch or two. If they can feel one, spread it a little bit to two centimeters and then do it again. One touch or two. And this is important because these different parts of the body, the back of the leg, the back of the hand, the fingertip, the lip, you know, depending on how intimate you guys want to be, they have different resolutions of touch. Touch cells are gathered together on places like the fingertips, the face, the palm, and the foot. So you should definitely feel two touches here, but on the side of your arm, you might only feel one. It's really cool. And high resolution touch areas are usually the areas you would think. They're very important for interacting with the world in a tactile way. But low resolution touch, that's things that like, if you get poked with something, you need to know to look at it and see what you're poked with. And yet, even after all that, that is not actually what touch is either. These cells are often at a nerve ending. So for example, a Pacinian nerve ending is an onion-like cover over a nerve. When you trigger by pressure or by touch, it's sending an electrical signal from that Pacinian to your brain. And hot, sharp, or damaging things just get intercepted on the way. They don't actually even get to the brain before you react. You know this because of reflexes. And the spinal cord is intercepting that signal and acting without you thinking. Yeah, that's right. Touch is so important to your body that the spinal cord can intercept touch signals and react before anything happens. You still get the signal in your brain, but you've already done the response. The signal has this route where it goes directly to the somatosensory cortex, which is again, that map of touch in your brain. Inside of that map is the homunculus, which is, it's essentially a map that we have created that shows an idea of what the body looks like from a touch perspective. 
and it's proportional to how much attention the brain pays to different things. The lips and the head and the feet and the hands are very big, whereas a lot of the body is very small. And the brain takes all that information and filters only the bits that you want. So when you're poked with something and you react, you don't necessarily need to know that you were touched, but you need to know that something happened so that you can pay attention to it. The parts of the brain that process the hands are physically larger than the parts of the brain that process the back, the legs, and of course they will change depending on what you use them for. The brain is very plastic, it rewires constantly, but touch is really valuable. Not just as a source of information, but because of the way we evolved. We evolved to need and want touch. Friendly touches lower our cortisol, which is a major stress hormone. Whereas aggressive touches, they ready our fight or flight responses. The brain needs touch to understand that mode of the world. Both of those things are touch, but they mean different things. So in the end, what is touch? It's a complex set of information delivered by millions of little reporters in and on your skin all over your body and inside of it. And sometimes touch information is super valuable, sharp, hot. Sometimes it's sexual, social. Hey. Sometimes touch information is not important at all. For example, my foot is currently touching the floor. My hair is currently touching my head. Big deal. That's always the case. And that's touch. But you're probably not paying attention to that. Touch is a complex set of information that you choose to value or evolution has molded you to value. So remember earlier when I mentioned that touch is so important that there are multiple ways for the brain to understand it in the somatosensory and insular cortices? Touch is emotional. Inside the touch system is the C-tactile system and it's just for emotional interaction. What if I completely blew this out of the water and said that some people are touch blind? Their mechanoreceptors don't seem to work. They can still feel, but they don't have any kind of understanding of what's happening. So if you can't feel touch, you still have that emotional system as a backup. But more on that next time. See what I did there? So you stick around and come back. This physical touch episode was number one of five. So next up is emotional touch. And over the week or so that I'm gonna do this series, we're gonna dive into how touch evolved and how we can hack our touch system, touch illusions, it's gonna be super fun, and even virtual touch and what happens in a world without touch at all. There's gonna be some great interviews. It's gonna be really interesting. So please subscribe for all the episodes in the series. And thank you so much for tuning in. Just get a little dose of trace. Thanks for watching everybody. And I will see you in the future.